free. What it do, what it do, brother Atum Ra, A1 Live in the place to be. Got the credit sisters in the building. Action Squad, what yeah. up? Hey man, we are A1.com. Check us out. Get in the action, baby. Make sure y'all tune in. You can tune in on WeAreA1.com, Facebook, Twitter. What else? Man, we on everything. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Get in action. Yay. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Jay Nicole. Hey, man, it's your brother, Atum Ra. Wednesdays, 8 p.m. You already know what's going down. Hey, A1 Live. We are A1.com slash TV. YouTube Live. Check us out. And what they got to do, Jay Nicole? Get in action, baby. Get in action. Yeah, yeah. Action One, doing it for the culture. Action one, inspiring action. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Yeah, yo. Man, what it do, man? It's your brother Atum Rod, J Nicole, Action Jackson holding us down, man. Shout out to everybody checking us out on we are a1.com slash TV. Shout out to everybody on Facebook, Twitter, on Twitter, everything. Yeah. Jay Nicole. Hey, brother. How you doing? I'm good, man. You know, it's Wednesday. How can I not be good? I'm here with you beautiful people in the A1 studios, man. It's going down. You mean here with me? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Everybody in the A1 studios, you know, even the Um, ones that you guys can't see. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, man. We we always got people, man, holding it down, man. You know, I got to put it. You know, I have to. I love my brother and all, but I be having a smash up sometimes. Oh, yeah, man. Well, well, you know, uh. You know this 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 week, man. You know the, the the dragon is turned up, man. And you know we got some more dragon energy coming into the H, man. You know what I'm saying? That we gonna uh, we gonna talk about it in a minute. The man. sound effects, though, I love them. Yeah, 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 <laughs> man. This is it's going down, man. It's going down, man. But yeah, man. I'm uh, I had a good week, man. You know, it's it's been long, but you know we here, we steady grinding, man. We steady getting it in. Uh, you know, actually been trying to work on getting a little bit more sleep. I've been How's trying. How's that going? I've been trying. Okay. I've been trying. All you can do is try. Yeah, you I know? try. I try. But, you know, I'm a. Eventually, you accomplish accomplish it. You know, maybe man. get 30 minutes extra. Yeah, man. Maybe. Maybe, maybe man. Uh, but, uh, you know, man, this week, man, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're happy to have, you know what I'm saying, a special guest in the building. Man. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He was actually uh, kicking it with us last week. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, over the uh, past uh, several weeks, uh, I got to know more uh, about the about the God and uh, what he's about, man. And, um, you know what I'm saying, everything uh, about uh, this brother, you know what I'm saying, definitely states that, you know what I'm saying, this brother is uh, 10 toes deep within the community. Mm. Uh, this brother has a high level of knowledge of self and uh awareness and man this man has an impeccable dedication to his craft you know <laughs> what i'm saying and you can see it manifested through uh you know when you look at the timeline uh you know what i'm saying the various things that uh he has done and has been a part of and you know i'm i'm happy and fortunate you know what i'm saying because i'm i'm already claiming you know what i'm saying that i'm gonna go ahead and hop in some more of these projects <laughs> Uh, you know, saying that the brother got uh, going. No man, got the one known the King King in the building. What's man. up, baby? What's up? What's up, yo? What's up? Thank y'all for letting me be on this show. This was cool and it was awesome last week to uh, check out uh, Project Grey Wolf. When yeah, yeah. The yeah. Film that you were yeah. starring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not happen to be Dad and me, right? make sure Dad you guys me. go yeah. and watch yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that that was a uh, that was cool to come here. It was, it was refreshing. To be in here and, and witness that so i'm glad to be sitting right here well, hey, man, i appreciate brother. you coming out in this arctic blast that we're having right now he's oh there. man this is feeling good it is cold <laughs> I don't know why, but it does feel you know we're not used to this yeah it does feel yeah. good yeah nah man i'm not feeling it he's man. like nah 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 nah, 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 nah me either nah, nah, palm nah. trees oh man you know <laughs> like man see this is something like me and my wife argue about all the time because uh you know i'm i'm from houston she's from shreveport uh -huh. and she's lived like I mean, we've both been a lot of different places, but she's lived more places than me, particularly like she's lived more places up north. So, so she, she's okay with she like, yeah. cold, right. Like, well, she likes the different seasons and yeah, things like yeah. that. And for me, you know, I'm an H time cat, man. Season's overrated. <laughs> yeah. I can live somewhere where it never gets below 70. Uh, and you know, I'll I be trying to be like, man, let's let's go further south. But, yeah, you know, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, but obviously, you know, as y'all can tell, I've been losing the battles. You know, yeah, but yeah. uh, but I you like know, the season. I like the season. But you know, people people in Houston, we complain a lot about the weather. It's like right. when it's hot, it's too hot. We complaining about it. When it's cold, it's too cold. We complaining about it. But you know, that's one of the things when you don't have a middle. Well, y'all's hot. It's hot. It is. I, I I'm I one even, of those people. I don't even think Satan hangs around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's hot. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, this ain't going vacation. He goes somewhere else. Huh? Yeah, Dude, man. I'm going to Denver. <laughs> hey, man, yeah. <laughs> Nah, man, yeah, it be going down, man, it be going down, man. But, uh, man, since your first time up here, man, just give a, uh, a introduction to yourself, man. Let people know uh, where you're from, what you do, uh, and how long you've been doing it, bro. Well, uh, I am uh, Kane James. Some people know me as White Cloud. I was uh, formerly in a band called Peekaboo Theory, the front man. And, uh, oh. Yeah, man, y'all saw that we coming in, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we starting out, man. We getting Afro punk up here, man. Oh, yeah, yeah that was good things. And, uh, I was born up in uh, Oklahoma at an Indian hospital up there. I'm an in ind indigenous American as yeah. well. And um, been traveling all over the country. Like you're talking about your wife. I traveled a lot of the West Coast states and in the middle of America states. And uh, and uh, kind of rooted here in Houston for the last, like, I guess, 13 years. But, you know, the type of jobs and careers and adventures I've taken on, I've been in and out of Texas and traveling. So... Um, since I've been here, I just been like working with a lot of people in the community and then also working with a lot of people in the uh, film community industry here recently in the last like seven years. And, um, right now I'm just over in, uh, the best part of Houston right now in the yeah. third ward, third ward, yeah. Yeah. Try, and, uh, hanging out over there with everybody. So that's, that's kind of what I've been up to lately. Man, most stuff, man, and, and 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 we appreciate you, man, and, and you know, man, I always know, you know, what I'm saying, if a brother is real, you know, what I'm saying, when you when you meet somebody and they know certain people, like you already know, you know, what I'm saying, they they know what's going on. I ain't gonna get their names because you gotta know, <laughs> oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying, who they are. But a lot of strong warriors and brothers. A lot out there. of strong warriors, yes. man. Hey, man, as we uh we finna roll into a a quick break, man. But when we roll into this break, man, we are gonna show uh the short film No Tomorrow. Man. Yeah. Oh, that was my first. Wow. Now. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. My first film that I did, my first project in uh, film school I did, but I was I was really proud of it, and it's it's somewhat based off of a true story. So. Man, and I yeah. and, and that was the one. Man, we was 
just was talking out there. I was trying to think about, yeah, I, I, I saw it. I liked it, man. So, man, uh, we, we finna roll into this break, man. Y'all check out No Tomorrow, man. We gonna be back with the homie Kane, man. Brother iTunes, Rod, A1 Live, man. Check us out. We A1.com. Yeah, Go subscribe. Yeah. Get You know some of the other things you got going on. Absolutely. So uh, thank you for having me. I feel like um, I'm in the presence <laughs> of like celebrity. <laughs> no, real it's, just, it's, just, it's just the shades, man. <laughs> um, so I think like 2000. Watching my show. I will move when you hear me. Babe, can you please go to the store for me? Well, you get on my nerves. Mm -hmm. I just got home now, I gotta go to the store. And don't forget my scratch off this time. Alright, All right, girl. Anything else you need? I need some bread. Alright. But don't forget my scratch off. Got you, baby. It's alright. Come on, put some more money up there so I can get mine back. No doubt. Uh, it's efficient. Uh -huh. Like a whistle. Yeah. That's what I do. Uh -huh. Got him. Get naked. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Forget it. Oh, man. Hey, come on, bro. It's my last cigarette, man. What? You got something else to say? It's my sig now, bro. Oh, my friend, are you being nice out there? Yeah, I'm always nice, fool. I hear they're looking for you. I'm good. You hear too much.
Toby? He said before he first started, man, that was his first one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't even yeah. know that when I, you know what I'm saying, watched it. Uh, I, I, I love the story because, uh, you know, I just figured out, like I said, I was trying to figure out if he was the, he was the one that died. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, all the different, different lessons within it, man. Uh, man, how was it shooting, shooting that, man? Man, that was, uh, that was an experience. Of course, it was, uh, it was, a, it was an assignment for school. And, um, I just, had this story of course it was based off a little bit of a true story like a uh, a personal moment in my family or something that happened you know um, my uncle never came back home and uh but at the same time I, i'm really into like crime stories like law and order and things right. of that sort and we had this camera and we had these cool locations downtown and um and then everything just took place just like even the, the the extras that were standing around you know i had some extra pizzas and um they were helping us bring out gear anyways. Right. So I was like, hey, if y'all could just stand right here so it can look like a crime scene, <laughs> y'all can have all these pieces. Right. And so they stood there, made it look really cool. And then um, the, the the artist that was in there, um, we, he go by Chief. Uh, he actually performed the, the music in it, the man, scoring. That's, that's and, true independent. And, yeah. Uh, true independent and then, right there, man. you know, the home that we were in was a partner of mine that actually produced some music, uh, you know, Irvine Wakefield. And um, we we just went from there, man. It was just cool, just the yeah. first time. And, and the main part was I'm in film school, and uh, I had to get my hands on some gear. I wanted to get on that gear, so I we got out everything, checked out everything we could, camera, <laughs> and, uh, uh, C stands, mm-hmm. everything we right. could, sandbags, and just went at it. And that's right. usually what you gotta do, man. In this film that. thing, you just gotta go get it. So, what was the grade though? The grade? What was the grade? What did the what did the professor grade you for oh, this particular? I got, I got an A for this. You I mean, should have. I, I, I would have had to write him a letter had he gave you anything yeah. less. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, well, I know you're gonna be harder on yourself than the professor was. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean we yeah. he's he was hard, Professor Rose was real. He was yeah. real, you know, but uh <laughs> I, I got an A for it and then also got reprimanded as well. Yeah. You know, I'm a freshman or sophomore kind of in school and you're usually supposed to be like a junior or senior before you can even get your hands on the gear mm-hmm. and the and the film an actual sequence. Right. So uh, you know, that was that was basically what was going on with that. So but I got a, I got a lot of friends with a lot of seniors and I got a couple of enemies with right. seniors, but hey. Right. Well, you don't get enemies moves. if you're good at anything, <laughs> you know, so. Well, definitely, man. We we definitely, uh, you know, some, we, we started with the music and we're going to close with the music. Uh, but, uh, man, talk about your journey, man, from from no tomorrow to today, man. And I know there's been a lot of works and learning in between, man. But, you know what I'm saying, how, how did you, you know what I'm saying, arrive, arrive here, man? Man, wow. So I'm a city boy that comes from the country. You know, I come from <coughs> rural areas and my family, we're a big family. I'm probably one of 114, maybe 55 grandkids. Wow. Um, yeah, we're, we're indigenous people. I'm saying, what tribe? Uh, Kumel Ankh, Gila River peoples out of Arizona, right between Tucson and um, Tucson and uh, Phoenix. Okay. A little town called Sacaton. And then we all, my grandmother, we all migrated over to Oklahoma, Altus, Oklahoma, which is like uh, near Vernon, Texas, Wichita Falls, Texas area. Gotcha. And um, and then my mom, she she worked a lot of different places, and then she rooted herself in Dallas, and I went to high school there. And um, but anyways, we just uh, I just had like a real humble 
hardworking beginning. Exactly. And when I got into film school, I just decided on my that I'm going to do film. And any job that I'm going to do to support myself while I'm doing film school is going to be with film industry. Mm -hmm. You know, and because uh, there was a lot of people offering like waiting table jobs and stuff. And I've done that before. I already did that. Right. And so I really wanted to hone in on my craft. I really was putting the school that I was going to to the test that, hey, I, I want to go to I want to go to um, Hollywood. I want to mm -hmm. go make movies. I want to do this for real. So I was really putting the test, and especially being in Texas. You kind of get this notion that, hey, we got to leave Texas to go and make it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I was just really dead set on like making it independently from where I am and mm. what I'm doing. And so once I got through it, uh, got to my junior year, I scored a, a big deal with this birthday party. This guy wanted me to film his birthday party and he wanted me to edit it to make it look like a reality TV show. Oh, cool. So I did the quote. He went for it. I walked away with a little under four grand working two days right. and living and hanging out and eating nice foods and stuff and wearing clean clothes. I was like, man, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> this is, this is what's up. And, right. uh, then, uh, linked up with a couple partners in school. Um, he had his own like video production company and he said, Hey, come out to the tracks with me, racetracks out in Katy. So I went out to the racetracks of Katy, did a couple of things, videos and photography for a family out there that races. Two weeks later, they call us up. Hey, we want you to come to North Carolina with us. Mm. So I went to North Carolina with them, did some videoing with the uh, Chase Racing and um, a couple other race teams. And um, we, that was affiliated with like NASCAR, affiliated with Pirelli World Challenge, CBS Sports, Fox Fox Sports. And I did that for like five, six years. Okay. And during and right in the height of that time, I got a chance to meet my beautiful wife at that time. Yeah. And so yeah. we were like just kind of texting back and forth and talking and you know, kindling our relationship at that moment. So it was a lot of beautiful things that were like developing during that time. Mm -hmm. It was that, and, man. Um, peace I just, to the queen, man. Peace to the queen. Peace to the queen, yeah. Y'all yeah. yeah. may not see it, man. Y'all might have saw an arm flash across the screen. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, she's trying to get them good shots. Oh, trying to yeah. get them good shots. So. Oh, yeah, but you know, sure. one thing that you said that, that really touched home was that you say you wanted to be successful in what you were doing where you were you didn't want to leave <laughs> because a lot of times what we see in media and music people want to go other places where they feel like they'll have a better chance of yeah, being successful yeah. why was that so important to you well I, I had a little bit of leg up because I was coming from a musical background mm -hmm. I had already had been with a successful band for like about six six years mm -hmm. at that point mm -hmm. and so when I came to film school that was another thing I did not want my peers to really know about because I wanted to get that film making like uh, respect mm -hmm. that I was like actually really trying to do this. I know a lot of times when you're already in the entertainment field, you kind of get that uh, he already know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. right, I right, didn't right. know what I was doing. Even to this day, I still sometimes don't know what I'm doing, but I know I have this creative energy in me mm -hmm. that has to come out. And so mm -hmm. I'd already came from you know being on tour, playing, performing, and uh, Brooklyn Academy of Music in Brooklyn and uh, the the Mint Club out in LA and touring with Afropunk a couple of dates and you know doing festivals with music and playing in front of 100,000 people right and so um, and there's a lot of groups in Houston uh, that helped us out to get to that point hmm, so I was real. already on the tip of like I got love for Houston and I got love for Texas where I'm from and I know that whatever I contributed to the band I was with, I had star power and I was like, I could do the same thing with yeah. film. Mm -hmm. So that was a real motivational drive inside of me. That's where it came from. Most definitely, man. I, I tell you, you made the right choice coming to Houston other than Dallas, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know, I look, I mean, he about to start a riot. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Most definitely, man. And, and, and being so, you know what I'm saying, well versed in, you know, cinematography and being able to shoot, you know, a lot of different um, types of scenes and things like that. What is it really about filmmaking that really kind of um, sticks to you, man? And also uh, being a part of the whole process, too, because, I mean, I'm pretty sure you know there are people on every type of project from music to film that are okay with only doing one part you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying like uh, but the people that write direct shoot yeah. act, you know what I'm saying like those are special people you know what I'm saying and, and you're one of those special type of people but man like what is it you know what I'm saying that, that really kind of uh, gets you going uh, to be a part of you know what I'm saying all aspects of filmmaking oh, that's a good question um, um, that that is a, a lot of passion for me for sure I, I got a lot of passion about doing film first of all and like you know i do a lot of instructing with my students and this is what i talk to them about are you good first, are you good you good this is what i what i talk to them about is like first of all the passion behind it and then secondly there's over a hundred jobs with every single production every single one um when i got a chance to work with uh, dave myers and data line that is not his real name it's his ig mm -hmm. name data yeah. line, with the uh travis scott sickle mode video that right there kind of opened it up to where I got a chance to see um, exactly how many jobs are involved, how important each one is, each step is as far as like the um, pre-production, production and the editing portions of it. So where you, you are right, you can just say, hey, I'm just going to work in editing or hey, I'm just going to work on production. You can say those things and you can be the people that have all the hats on and you're a writer, you're the director, and you're a producer. You can do those things. But again, you want to have a team yeah. to right. utilize that because all the products that I have and things that y'all have seen so far and the things that you will see later on through this this uh, podcast, they were with a team yeah. right. uh, that put together. Even if the team started out with just me strategizing this with, with my wife, you know what I'm saying, or me strategizing this with one of my, my close friends on the phone or something like that, and writing it down on paper, it still takes plan and, and, and action to make it happen. So it's just understanding like there's more than just one job on, this, mm -hmm. on making these film things. And right. whenever I was on stage performing, I got this certain feeling and I get that same feeling when I'm behind the scenes with the camera. Like I'm literally like dancing, yeah. right. I'm literally dancing when I'm like doing these production because I see it coming to fruition. Right. Something that was in my mind. Then it was on paper. Then I told somebody. Then they talked crap about it. <laughs> stuff about it. And we all laughed <clears throat> and cried and got mad and yeah. rewrote it and do it. And then we went and did it. And now here it is and everybody's like, wow, wow. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's an amazing feeling wow. to be able to create something and then see the final process of it, the final product that oh you've God, created. Yeah, yeah. many a night, especially when we're doing the When You're Home, that the day we would film it, and then we would be so excited to get back to the house yeah. to review the footage. Mm -hmm. And when we're reviewing the footage, I mean, there's people laying on the on the floor, mm -hmm. on the couch, people standing up behind, jumping up and down, like, man, look at that. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Me too, same thing. So. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure, so, for sure, so, man. Well, man, you know, uh, Jay Nicole, man, you already know what time it is, man. You know you what I'm saying? Yeah, man, it's time for me to uh, to hear some headlines Oh, real my. Quick, man. You know what What's going on in America today? Yeah, man, you know, yeah. I'm the... Uh, you know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the headline, you know what I'm saying, thing, man. You know, I'm always paying attention to what's Absence going on, Conspiracy man. Corner? Oh, yeah. Nah, man. You know what I'm saying? No, well, that well I mean, you know, I, I wasn't going to go there. But, I mean, you know, with the first story I'm starting out with, man, with our, with our homie Byron Allen, you know what I'm saying, that's currently in battles with the Supreme Court, man. Um, yeah. Power, power to that, that brother. brother, Power man. to that brother. Uh, you know, I mean, as, as we already sure. know, man, um, you know, these these legal cases, legal situations, um, they're, they're always dealing with more than actually just the case and the situation, you know, um, particularly with the Supreme Court, uh, because, you know, it's always about action one, inspiring and everything action. else like that. Uh, but... Uh, you know, in case you don't know, uh, you know, there is a, a twenty billion dollar lawsuit, you know what I'm saying, at stake against Comcast, mm -hmm. which, you know what I'm saying, I hope they I hope they have you know what I'm saying, pay because um and uh, essentially what they're what they're saying is that 
uh, the the reasons for them discriminating against him and doing business was the fact of that you know what I'm saying he was a he was a black man you know what I'm yeah. saying like there was no other legitimate reasons for Comcast not to pick up these stations mm-hmm. that he was a part of you know what I'm saying other than the fact of that they just didn't want to do yeah business with the black man uh so man but man Supreme Court that's big that's <laughs> big and even the day them saying that they're gonna that this this case should go forward this right mm-hmm. exactly saying this should go forward right right and, and how he's going to use it to defend it is that you know that 1866 civil rights law right like he's using that you know, right for, for us to be included economically yeah right i know we've already heard i hope people have heard you know right. and what that's about yeah that's a big thing because we we have a person that we celebrate every year that was slain. Right. Mm. Slain for that. Right. You know facts. I mean? Facts. Facts. I mean, Byron Allen has kicked down so many doors, though, you know, in the oh, industry as, as a black man. And as he says, just as a man, because he's never really wanted to just be recognized as just a black man in the industry. He just wants to be known as the man right. in the industry, which which is a big thing. You know, That's he's done that. Right. That's right. You went in a debate, you, you, you stumble them because they're expecting you to say, these these misnomers the black man or african american or all those things they're, they're expecting you to say that mm-hmm. so when you use it as what they say i'm a man right or a human or Amer- i'm american that's what that's what you need to use right right yeah. right well man we finna uh, roll into a break man and we're gonna be back with a few more headlines man brother i turn right we are yeah. a1.com q what's up man you still here go on and subscribe Get it again, baby. What? Get in action. Say your ex-man can't do it about three. Get in action. Tell me what is the deal. Tell me what is the deal. So I challenge you today to start strong. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm calling for you. Can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm calling for you. Action one, inspire next. Tight, we keep it tight. Oh uh, man, uh, so man, we, we was going over these headlines, man. Uh, and say the cold, man. Hmm. Yes. You 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 know uh you know this week the uh the level of dragon energy in H Town is gonna be at an all time high. And I I figure is why is that though? Oh, tell man, tell me and the people why. Well, it's because our dear brother Kanye West. <laughs> It's going to be coming down to Lakewood. He about uh, to turn to, Lakewood you know out. I said turn it out to bring his uh Sunday service uh as as one of my uh good friends said there's probably going to be some epic cooning going on. I have a question. Uh, Do you have to pay I, to get into the Sunday service? That's well, a question well, that I I need well, to know. You know what I'm saying? Well, they 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 haven't been charging to get in, but you know I'm pretty sure they got the VIP or you know if you want some of that um holy apocalyptic clothes that Kanye be selling. Uh, I'm not going to start. I'm not going to start. Well, I, you know. I think, and man, like I said, man, y'all know, man, I've been one of the biggest defenders of Kanye publicly, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just our crazy cousin. But uh, yeah, I think I think somebody described the clothes as... Uh, Slave clothes? You know, 
Nah, I think they said oh, it's, uh, it's something that's that... That's how I describe them. I'm they sorry. said it's something that a homeless person will wear in the apocalypse or something like that. <laughs> Those are so, that's something that our ancestors wore in the fields. Nah, man, I don't even know if they... That's, know that's if they what it that is. Day. They got holes in them. He yeah. brought back clothes with holes yeah. in them. You know, when you were little and you had a hole in your shirt, what did your mama tell you to do? Get your butt in that house <laughs> nah, and go change that holy nah, shirt. Man, that's what's hot now. That's what's hot, man. Man, man. It's the end of the world. Man, the of the world. <laughs> man check, check the code, man. Check this, man. They say your boy gonna get 300K too, man. For coming to Houston? For coming to Lakewood, Who's man. Who's giving it to him? Joel Osteen? I guess so, man. Can he man, pass some of that out the hood? Like, boy's about to get that 300K, man. 300K to 300K. Come. He gonna do that Jesus is King. Let me ask y'all this, though. So. I, I see little video clips and stuff like that about his Sunday service and stuff like that. Are they just singing? <laughs> um, is it just like a huge like concert for Jesus? Uh, you got to do a little bit of both. It's a little bit of music, and then I mean a little bit of him ranting. Uh, <laughs> but I think uh, you know I, I've heard mixed reviews. Um, I've heard the people say that they like it more at the ones that wasn't in churches because you know like he kind of do them like in a field or whatever yeah. versus like the ones where they kind of did it in church. Mm-hmm. You know, man, it was like those ones. Uh, but yeah, man, I think it's just. They yeah they give him uh you know thirty forty five minutes to 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 rant and do his because I mean the music is fire you the know? music is fire the music yeah is fire. I you love know, like music. I said you may get a few rants but uh but you know what I saw, I read something that said that Kanye Sunday service may be saving religion mm. what do you feel about that hey well hey I say I'm this. gonna ask the question oh, well. y'all. right well yeah y'all know man I'm, I'm not gonna get my religious soapbox this week but. This um, is not the conspiracy right, quarter. Right. But they did say at uh, one of the last churches he did, I think like between that week and the next week, like a thousand people that joined that church. And like he just did it there. Like he wasn't even a part of the church, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I guess Joe Olstein is going to triple I'll, that hey, number. Boy, or something hey, Lakewood like that. Be popping on Sunday. Boy. He finna sell a lot of books, y'all. Hey, he oh, finna sell man, a lot you know of books. What I'm you know, just trumped over, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, hey. man. Uh, and you know, it's one of those things, man. Hey, uh, you know, if, if people like it, man, it worked for them, man. Uh, they they still go crazy over him. You know, I I heard, I heard the album. You heard the album, the Jesus King, man. I have heard it. I have heard it. <clears throat> you heard the Jay Nicole. I have not. Yeah, man, you know, I got it. I'm going to listen to it, got a few, Got a few tracks on there, man, that I like, man. Yeah. Uh, I, like one, I like one of the tracks that's on there. It kind of <laughs> gives me a, a, a Jay-Z kind of feel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's basically Kanye. Kanye's you know, Curtis, a man. very you know talented like, musician yeah. and artist, uh, you know, so. Yeah, man, he is, yeah, man. He's he's man. Kind of, yeah. He's a, he's a genius and he's a, he's a dope artist. And, uh, I don't. I don't agree with everything he says. I don't I don't agree with everything he says, but so, at the end of the day. So Jay Nicole, man, you, you think uh boys gonna be sleeping outside of Lakewood? I'm not. So try to try to get in on that Sunday side. But I'm sure they will. They sleep outside of Walmart on Black Friday, so I mean Yeah. yeah the last thing something uh, just happened. Somebody mm-hmm. was sleeping outside from Thursday to the Oh, oh yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh came in with, like, when the chicken sound. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. though. But yeah, man. So yeah, man. Get out to Lakewood this week, man. You want to see Yeezy, man? You better better get out there early, man. I'll pay but, somebody uh, twenty dollars to stay stay in the line for me so I can come and take yeah, some pictures. Man, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be going down. Like I said, man, you might get some Trump rants. You never know, oh. man. I don't know. I don't you gonna know. make America great again in Lakewood on Sunday? <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. The only thing I want to know <laughs> is like, hey, the next time it's rain, man, is it, it, Austin yeah. gonna open up them doors? Or not, man. That's oh, it. You know, he didn't open it up yeah, through yeah, Harvey, we just, baby. We just, we just, we just want to know, man. We just want to know. Man. You know what's funny about Joe Olstein, though? You know how he didn't open the doors in Harvey, and when we thought this past flood was going to be very bad, he made sure that he got on air and was like, the doors are open. Right. He ain't want right. to drown. He right. didn't want to drown. Right, right. I just want to know, man, why his uh, why his station on Sirius Radio ain't a religious station, but it's a, uh entertainment station. But he's I not a religious. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's not, not a religious pastor. He's a motivational speaker. That's yeah, why. There it is. Yeah, that church be popping, man. That church be popping. Yeah. He's selling a lot of books. So yeah, man. Y'all, y'all get out there, man. Uh, if you a member of Lakewood, you probably want to skip this week because uh, <laughs> they winning, man. They yeah, winning. They winning. They winning. I, I, can't can't knock it, man. Man, Jay Nicole, man. Have you have you ever been to China? 
I have never been to China. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, I've been And I don't want to because I've heard something. Yeah, man. Yeah. I heard uh got two people that have recently gotten the black plague. The black plague. Man. Like I from the call it the black plague. Why well, can't it be the white plague? From the long time ago <laughs> thing. Plague, well, you know? well, the, the, the white plague is what we call America. <laughs> <laughs> That's another subject for another day. <laughs> we talking about the actual disease, you know what I'm saying? That has, yeah. that has recently come about. 2019. The Black Plague. That's man. whoa. That's crazy. Yeah, whoa. Yeah. That's I didn't know that. That's, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, even they, 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 they wear the mask, don't they? They, they wear the mask. Who man. came? Who, who brought them the Black Plague? Where did that pop out of? Hey, man. Well, he, y'all heard of Bole, Bole, right? Like mm-hmm. in that, like eating rats, mm-hmm. in that, like rat oh, meat. Oh yeah, you know and what? I, they I got mean, the wrong rat. They got the wrong rat. They, they got, got the wrong. They ain't get speedy. They got uh, slow mo. But yeah, man, they uh, you know, they say you know it could be through you know what I'm saying flea bites or infected animals. Flea. What they gonna do? Uh, well, um, luckily they they caught them, so they they they're getting treated. Um, you so know, they can treat the black plague. Yeah, 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 man. That's 2019. They're catching early. I hope so. Don't say that's 2019. They got <laughs> cancer. They can't right. treat. You know, they can treat it, but well, they well, can't you know treat it. Man, you know? I think you know some people are really went in. With some, uh, you know, just regular symptoms or whatever, and then the doctor kind of gave him that look, like, uh, yeah. But <laughs> there's like a billion people over there, right? So I mean, I mean, do they? I don't know. Is it needed or you know? Yeah, somebody, if it's somebody, spread, it's gonna spread quick. Everything's too close together. No way, no way. They gotta stop eating those dogs and puppies and rats and all that stuff. You know, oh man, hey, man. But you know, it's it's still a thing that like goes on like worldwide. You know what I'm saying? Like that there there are still people uh, that you know. Over I the did, past yeah. few years, it's, it's still got it. Man. Yeah, I did hear that it didn't. It, it's never gone. Oh, like right, the, yeah. the blue, the was it blue bonnet plague or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 I, 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 yeah. yeah. And I think that's kind of like the the the, the conversation because you know we have the conversation about immunization and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, some people are strongly against immunization. Some people are strongly for. Uh, you know, personally, I kind of fall in the middle. <laughs> uh, you know, what I'm saying, I, yeah. I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I, I don't think that. I guess so. Blanket term, you know what I'm saying? Like some things, our research, I think, you know what I'm saying, we need. Other things, I think we don't need. Right. Uh, but, you know, still at the end of the day, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons why. Because, like, nothing goes away, really. You know nothing right? goes away, really. Yeah, nothing right. goes. Because we still had that, uh, that, that measles outbreak. I mean, and they, I guess, vaccinating people. And right. I don't know if they want to claim that all those people weren't vaccinated, but I don't know. But, yeah. it, I mean, I heard, you know, they have different different strands of stuff. I heard there, I don't know how true it is, but there's supposed to be a new strand of HIV out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on now. That as well. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, hey, man, you know Be careful that. out there, Hey, man, man I'm, I'm retired, so I'm good, man, but you know what I'm saying? My homies out there, man, I be trying to tell them, man, stay woke, My man. Thing is hey, woke. take your prep. Yeah, right. well, gotta get your prep. But that's they got the commercials out. That cover the new strain of HIV. That's, that's probably why saying. there's they a new strain. They have all this prep stuff. <laughs> that's probably why. This is Dang. <laughs> You're right. Hey. They thought they wasn't giving it out. They was just giving a morph version. Right. Mighty morph and power HIV. Hey, hey, to stay in the house. Yeah. To stay in the yeah, house. Man, go to sleep. Man. Go to sleep, man. Uh, man, well, the last story, man. Um, Facebook, man. Facebook had an issue come up this week again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but, you know, us Droid users weren't affected this time, which, of course, we always are. They always lie. Mm-hmm. But this time it was the spy phone, people. Um, <laughs> you know, that was a, a Facebook bug, you know what I'm saying, that automatically, you know what I'm saying, started uh, your camera, you know what I'm saying, whenever you were scrolling through the app. Uh, and, you know, it was a, a few times, you know, you pick up a phone up on Facebook, you know what I'm saying, and you see some pictures there, you be like, hey, I ain't post that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be only based on, you know what I'm saying, consent or when you turn it on, but it was a bug they're supposed to be fixing this week. Right. And uh, they, it's, I, haven't, uh, I haven't checked into whether they actually uh, fixed it or not. But uh, yeah, it was automatically turning on people's camera. Uh, and- the more you hear about this Facebook, not to cut anybody, right. but I, I'm... Man, it seems like this is minority report going yeah, on yeah, here. Yeah. I mean, this is scary. Like, right. oh, yeah. what's funny is that they focus on Facebook, but what about everything else you don't hear about? The gram and all that. See what I'm saying? Stuff. They focus on they take they put yeah. the attention somewhere because they don't want you to look, look somewhere here else. You know, so that's it. what I, I'm concerned about. Right. So what we do? Do we just 
delete our social media. We didn't hey, have it before, hey, oh, you we, know. Oh, but in, oh. in this time, oh. but in this day and time, you know, right. it's, well, no, it's, that's it's, a hard one, right. man. It's hard. It See, it's, it's we just got to get back to you know, what I'm saying continuously building our own, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? that's why I, you know what I'm saying. Shout out to the homie Shern, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, Black Business Empire that you yes, know, that yes. we're trying to build up. You know what I'm saying? Like, just just know that's coming, blackbusinessempire.com. But man, uh, we built our own man, and um, I think that the collection of data is something that's always going to be with us. But I, I think that there are more ethical means that you know what I'm saying if we control the companies we can find a way to ethically use people data and also hey, find a way to cut people in on the money yeah. that's what I was thinking like, that's too the main yeah. thing, you know what I'm saying like not only are they spying on us not only are they doing this and that but like they taking our habits and then they selling them and making money yeah. just off watching us yeah, like, yeah. So they could cut out going on here man yeah. you know what I'm they could kill poverty with that man yeah. just pay the people who own it give them a cut that's it come on man how Come about on, give man. all the homeless people and people who are in poverty cell phones and have them record how they talk so they can, you know, do you know how they have those algorithms that make yeah. you know how you how you can use a uh, voice <coughs> voice activated stuff, you know, right. yeah. and everybody speaks in a different dialect and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They take that from us using certain apps right. and put it into these softwares to be able to recognize how each individual talks. Right. Why not mm -hmm. just let people in other areas do that? Hey, and get man, paid man. for it. Hey man, stay woke. Stay woke. Stay yeah, woke, stay uh, yeah, stay on it, man. All right, man. So the homie K, man. So you you know what I'm saying, you you got these uh wonderful videos, man. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Got these um, you know, and it's it's such a wide variety, you know what I'm saying? Like it's not anything that like like a style cuz like, you know, a lot of people kind of have a style that you kind of they kind of get pigeonholed into, you know what I'm saying? Like when you go to like your other side, like your website, right, right. You know what I'm saying you see, you know what I'm saying you working on the sicko mode video, you know they got to got to give them props for that, man. Yeah, that was but fun. Then, like I said, you see the NASCAR, then you see, you know, what I'm saying the other films, you know what I'm saying. Um, but uh, kind of like you said, man, you 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 started with music. Yeah. Uh, man, talk about that, man. Talk about your journey as an artist as well, man, because uh, I know that that's just a, that means just as much to you as the filmmaking. Oh yeah, that I mean it it, it was a uh I mean it's 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 just in me. So I can't say it's over. It's just uh that was a cool great moment and um again I I started out like up in um Dallas, Texas. My brother, he's always been involved with music. We always was a a, a good click together. Matter of fact, the click that we started with produced the album uh, for Chameleonaire that he won the the Grammy Award Grammy for uh, Riding Dirty, Riding Dirty, yeah. uh, playing skills. Yeah. They produced that. That's the era that we come from, mm -hmm. and those those were like my best friend. Like we slept in the same apartment, and everything like that. And my brother, he kind of heard me singing like a couple of you know rock songs and alternative music songs at that time, and. That's what kind of propelled me to go find and go be in part of bands. And once I got part of bands, I just kind of did that and then moved down to Houston and lucked up working over at uh, not working for Music World Music, but working at the studios there and with other artists that were being developed and everything. I met this cat, Ramon Wakefield and a couple other guys, and we put together a band and about probably less than six months later we were headed to south by southwest to mm -hmm. perform and play Kevin. and so from year after year after year all these like big groups like groups as in like a uh, live nation and stuff like that were helping us out with music uh performances and uh showcases that was put on so it was just just like a snowball man right. it just once we said we wanted to do it just kept on doing it and uh a couple of guys guys that own like sugar hill studios is like a really old studio here famous like freddie mm -hmm. freddie fender and all them uh billy gibbons from the zz top they like kind of took us under their wing and let us record in that studio oh, that's for amazing. like almost a year for free wow, wow. for free that's love yeah mad love yeah. so we produced our first album science and programs which is on youtube uh, Peekaboo Theory, Science and Programs, and put that that out, and it was a total dreamscape album. So it's like set ten songs if you just skip through, but it's really twenty songs because there's songs in between mm -hmm. the, uh, the 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 record. So it was right. like a dreamscape, 
and then we produced a second album that never got released and no one's ever heard these songs at all i mean we i still have them right. but at the same time it was just uh we were just kind of doing something a little bit different like tv on the radio was coming out at that time right. and um we were getting compared with this group from the 80s called living color uh doug pinnick from uh king's x that was really big with mtv in like uh ni the 90s right. they kind of like uh let us perform a couple shows with them up in north north uh, houston and so uh the music music it was really a good experience right. a great experience like business wise just learning the ins and outs of that right. and then just being a musician and a rock star or whatever you yeah, want to call it yeah. and having a good time you know right. what i'm saying so it was well, and now I think, you know what I'm saying, you you still have that, you know what I'm saying, within your films, you know what I'm saying, because it's it's a connection right there, man. Uh, and as we roll into this break, man, you know, it's something that, like, I speak about often uh, with a lot of the uh, artists that I'm dealing with on, like, I think more of them should be linking up with filmmakers. Yes, like, I, yes. Like, I think it's cool doing albums, doing mixtapes, you should do that, but I think that more of them need to be pitching their songs. Visuals too. is in right now. In. Visuals is in. Visuals is what's in. And people are clicking on visuals, videos. They're not clicking on just pictures. They're not clicking on lyrics. Right. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? And if you're doing these ciphers where you're out in the public space, that's cool and all. But people want to hear, see a story. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? That's why country music is still reigning at the top mm -hmm. because they're telling stories. Right. They're doing stories. Agreed. And that's what you need to have. So, yeah, link up with me. Link up with a videographer. And all those investors out there looking to do small investments in film, hey, we need it. And small investments mean anything up under $200,000, $100,000, $50,000 to put into a project. And and let's, let's, go, let's go make some money. Let's go... Go do some, uh, make some stories. We don't have to have just Tyler Perry yeah. in Atlanta. Right. We can have 20 Tyler Perry's right. in right. Houston, Texas. Right. So if people right. do want to invest or if they want to look at your work or get in contact with you or anything like that, how can they do so? Just go to www.advfilmworks.com. Drop us a message or you can call me at 832-859-1240. I'm not afraid to pick up the phone yeah. and um, we can get things working from that point. Before we go, though, guys, I do want to make sure that you guys are checking out our website. I need you guys to use your little fingers and go to weare1.com. We have some pretty cool stuff going on on there. We, you can check out our events page, or we have our current, past, and future events that are going to be coming up. And speaking of a future event, you guys may have seen a little promo for a Valentine's Day event that we are hosting called Love Fest. And it's basically just your ultimate date night experience. So make sure you guys get your tickets. They are on sale right now. Early bird tickets are on sale for a discounted price. So go to weare1.com slash events. Also check out our TV page where you can see all of our podcasts that we host. Weare1.com slash TV. Check out our radio player. We play nothing but independent music from all artists from right here in Houston and abroad. Make sure you check them out and show them some love as well. Um, I too. Oh, well. Guess I was wrong on that one. So, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, we got, we got thrown off. So, Man, uh, we Kane. lied, baby. We yes, lied. yeah, man, came, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just we uh, close this out, man. Uh, you, you also, man, you, you do, you do work with the kids, man. Uh, yes, man. man that's we definitely got to uh, salute you for that, man. Thank you. Uh, how yeah. can people uh, support you uh, with, with with that initiative, man? Man, the same thing. The same website. Go there, talk to us, and also if you're on IG, go to at ADV Film Works, and that's where I show a lot of the educational side. These kids at Urban Enrichment Institute. You can actually go to uh uh at urban enrichment institute and see what these what they're doing 35 year old programs set in fifth ward uh working with black and latino boys um between the ages of 10 to 17 taking them on field trips to different places that they don't get a chance to see we all teach entrepreneurship uh programs in there with robotics graphic arts um money sense and then i teach the photography and film program and then we also have a brother company of mine just add beats uh teaching kids how to design midi boards and how to make beats and do music musical programs so it's a great program for these kids to be involved with because these are the ages that they either go left or right mm -hmm. and you could take your pick what that means um and but when we when we're there we try to give them some sort of entrepreneurial spirit about what it is you're doing and then also 
I'm, I want to impl imp uh, implement like this group economic situation mm -hmm. of like how does a filmmaker utilize graphic arts? How does a filmmaker utilize HTML coding and show them so that way whenever you're out here, just like you guys with the podcast and you guys are linking other talented artists by having this platform is an amazing thing. And this is exactly what these kids that are 10 and 17 years old need to be doing because they know how to do it. Mm -hmm. We just got to show them right. and we just got to give them the avenues to do it. And it don't take money. It right. just because we're already you're already doing it. We already buy headphones. Mm -hmm. We already buy microphones and speakers and cameras. Right. Let's show them how to use a camera phone if that's all they have access to to make a movie. Yeah. Right. Man, man, that's real. Deal. Get in action. Real Get in action. Man, you, know what I'm you do it all, man. The artist, man. Filmmaker, father, man, you know what I'm saying, man. Well, one last time after we get out here, man, how can people all contact you, man? Yeah, go to that www.adpfilmworks.com. Reach me there. Also, 832-859-1240. Go there. If you're on IG, Blackjack Films, B-L-K-J-A-G Films. Um, and you can just reach out, hit me in a DM. I'm always going to communicate back with you because we're ready for uh, everyone, sponsors, investors, actors, directors, producers, writers, especially, especially writers, and especially black female writers. I know y'all got stories out there. Bring them to me. So, Let's figure it out. Hey, man. Well, another week up, another week down. Yeah. Remember, action, agility, life and community, modern media, modern solutions. Hey, when we here, take the call. I'll be leaving every week. Get in action, baby. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Peace, brother Atom Ryan, you tuned in to Action One Network.